Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, coaching. When is it legal? When is it not? What are they really saying? Stay tuned. All right, guys, so good morning to everybody out there. Coffee sponsor of the day is my man Tan Yi Fang James hooking it up again. I appreciate um, all the coffee you hooking me up with. Uh, James writes, hi, it's me again. Just feel like saying I string my racket around 57 to 60 pounds. Wow. Okay. Well, James, I have to say I rarely string rackets that tight anymore. Um, I feel like you're probably hitting with a continental grip and you kind of go straight back and straight through. Let me know if I'm right. <laughs> and maybe you use a, let me know what kind of racket you use. Actually, that would help me a little bit too. Cause are you a big racket and then trying to, um, take out the power from the, the big boy or do you use a pro staff type racket and you just used to it being tight because you hit so flat um i would love to hear that from you and then i can make a comment back you know what i'm saying um thank you again for the coffee i appreciate it and i appreciate it very much uh if you guys want to support my dark roast coffee habit sumatra 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 from Pete's today. All right. Uh, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. And you can hook me up there. All right. Thank you all for keeping it rolling. All right, guys. So every tournament, uh, I feel like every Grand Slam tournament, there's always some controversy about uh coaching right whether you're taking bathroom breaks or hand signals or you know looking up at the box and them giving you a gesture like you got to do this right or you know like some baseball signs you know pull on the nose you know do some of this stuff right and it's like, oh, you know, listen listen to yourself right wipe your face dude you got like drool on yourself from sweating so much I don't know what they're saying, but let's go find somebody who does. All right. So I'm going to see if I can recruit coach Peter Bartlett for this one. So Peter Bartlett's been a coach for like close to 30 years at the University of San Francisco. He's been the men's coach for a lot of it. He's now the women's coach and he's also the current athletic director of the, of the tennis program. So let's go see if I can track him down and we can ask him these questions. Stay tuned. All right, so I got Coach Peter Bartlett here that's going to help explain uh, what the rules are in terms of coaching. Um, welcome, Peter. Thank you. Um, so on the ATP men's tour side, coaching is just not allowed? It's not allowed. Yeah, by rules, it's not allowed in any of the circumstances. So uh, they have not allowed that yet. Okay, so when you're in the box and people are like, mm, doing this or doing that, that's a technically illegal. Right, and that's where you're getting some of the controversy with, with a few of the, the players, right? Where you'll they'll catch them every once in a while, mm -hmm. right? It will then come down to the ruling body at that particular time, the head referee, whether they're going to call that out or not. Um, you can get that in some of the signaling that we've seen in the past have been bathroom breaks, have been certain things like that. I mean, you'll have that, uh, you know, nonverbal communication going on between the box and the player, and that's the piece mm. that... That uh, you know, sometimes right. It could be could be that they've been coached <laughs> for years and years, and they know what to look at, they know what to see. Um, so you know, some coaching probably gets done that way, unfortunately. Uh, but they try to be as aware of it, uh, you know, shutting it down as much as possible, obviously. But on the WTA, the women's tour, you can coach. Yes. So what they did, they add some rules for non Grand Slam tournaments where 
the women are allowed to have one coaching session per set is my understanding on the rule on the WTA. And that was, uh, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a little bit of an experiment, meaning that uh, they want to try some of what that feels like and looks like. Um, so a coach can go down and actually visit and they can have, um, in a sense, interaction of any type uh, during that break. So non-grand slam. Non-grand slam. So you shouldn't be seeing it here at the French Open and the Grand Slams. They haven't approved that yet. Got it. So let's, let's backtrack because in everything except for the pro level, you're allowed to coach. Um, not allowed to do it in the juniors. So that's... Oh, that's, you're not allowed no, to do it in juniors. No. Oh. So the juniors, you're, you're not allowed to do it. That's where, again, some of all this stuff gets developed. The parents and the coach have to stay on the sideline. And that's where some of those clever signals have gotten developed. <laughs> okay, right? got it. Uh, they're not allowed to do that. But the only circumstances are some of the, the cup pieces. So meaning that you've gone to a team competition. So they're going to have team championships coming up in July for the juniors. They'll be able to coach there. Um, some of the junior Fed Cup and Davis Cup pieces, they can do that. Like they would mimic the, 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 those senior events as well. Got it. But in college, it's free for all. Yep. And then when they come to college, then they're allowed to be coached on court. Okay, yeah. so let's get to the important stuff. Yeah. What do we need to really tell them? What do they need to absorb that they they can't tell themselves? Well, I think it's really, it's, it's reminders of what has gone on throughout your, their training sessions. You know, as you know, as as uh, temperament can, can, can change, mentality can change throughout a match, it can be mental pieces, it can be inspiring pieces, it can be you know, pieces that are trying to get them back to a disciplined place mm -hmm. uh, when it comes down to the structure of their points. It can be plain and simple strategy that a coach has seen and wants to deliver to that player. Um, and obviously that can happen on the changeover, in, in the regular changeover, the 90 second changeover, but it also can happen in between points as long as there is no disruption of play. Got it. Um, and, and that in the college area, they're, they're supposed to kind of have an area in which they're supposed to stay to. That, that gets violated a little bit, um, but they are allowed to go and coach the player as long as there's no disruption to player the time. Got it. So what's the most common thing you tell them? Well, again, I think it depends on the athlete. It okay. depends really on the athlete. Each athlete is different as to what you need to, to decide to coach them on. There's some that you don't even have to do anything. You can maybe just inspire them a bit, right? Okay. Um, but I think um, it's a lot of it is getting back to the discipline, getting back to the game plan that's been set for them, right? Um, and if anything changes in the match, being able to sense what that change is and then deliver that information to them. Um, so I would say it's, it's mainly about that, you know? So it's like a reminder slash pep talk slash mm -hmm. pumping you up. It can be. Yeah. Okay. You know, there's some circumstances where, like I said, you don't have to mention the strategy that much. You just have to make sure that their mentality is correct. And then there's some where it's heavy strategic pieces, you know, oh. where, where, you know, you, you, you want to, you've seen something on the opponent's side, you've seen a strategy that you think could work. So you now need to get that information to that player. And those are, those are where you're sitting on the court. Sometimes you're staying on that match the entire time and you're trying to deliver that information as clean as you can on those 90 second breaks. Um, they just had a situation, I think, in the NCAA is where, you know, some of that coaching effect can kind of happen. You know, it was in the finals and, you know, they had two players that were playing August Holmgren and Ben Shelton. And, you know, there's a great example where the sets are going different directions, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Holmgren won the first, mm -hmm. Ben came back in that second mm -hmm. and now that third set becomes this kind of chess piece of okay what did you get done in the first what did they do better in the, in the second and then it comes down to in the particular case of ben shelton it was about discipline getting ben into a more disciplined space versus Ooh. versus something where he's just free to hit balls all over the place Got it. right so it, it, it once that was then delivered and once he began to implement then it became a tougher you know piece for august to then fight right um, so I think that's what's kind of getting delivered in that particular case. And then on the flip side, you know, it's trying to get August, if, if again, his attitude starts to decline or he's feeling dejected, then it's about getting him back up so that he can again take on some of those pieces, right? So I think that those were, those were pretty evident, I think, in that NCAA men's final. Um, so yeah. you're, you're, uh, basically what I'm trying to ga gather from you, I guess, is um, 
it, it's not really about coaching at, at that point. It's about inspiring and uh, getting them at a energetic level where uh, they can take what they know and kind of move with it. I mean, here's the bottom line. The reason that, you know, one of the, 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 the pushbacks on coaching in general is that you know, back in the day that, you know, the athlete is supposed to have learned all right. these lessons exactly. and, and being able to implement that in, in, in very tight situations like Grand Slam tournaments. I mean, that takes a lot, mm -hmm. but that also takes a, a lot of tennis IQ from that player and right. a lot of things to be able to put together. That's where they're not really willing yet to kind of open up the can of worms. Uh, but in college, they have, right, because right. these are young players that are developing, right. that are trying to learn. Um, however, obviously at that highest level in college tennis, you have guys that are close to, close to that pro level. They know what they're doing, right? They know what they're doing, but once again, they're young, they can lose sight of the mentality. They can lose sight of their attitude. They can lose sight of some pieces, right? So that's what you're there for. You are there to remind them you're, you're there to pick on some things. So you're, I mean, not to yeah. belittle you yeah. <laughs> yeah. or your job. Yeah. So you're like. Psychiatrist, therapist, psych <laughs> yeah, you, right? you are, a bit. you are, you are, and you know they've they've gone through the training that that day or that week, so they're they're supposed to know a bit of what they're supposed to be doing. But once again, you're trying to get them in that state of mind. You're trying to remind them, yeah, right, a lot of that. There you go. See, yeah. coach, um, not only does he have to have a <laughs> PE degree, he's got to learn therapy degree, right? <laughs> Psychiatry yeah. degree, yeah. psychologist degree, <laughs> right? How to read minds, right? Where are they? Are they in a good space? How do I get them in a good space? All right. Thank you, yeah. Peter. I yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Absolutely. Peter Bartlett, head coach, women's tennis, athletic director, University of San Francisco. All right. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Hey man, he, you can tell he be some, through some emotional damage. No man, you look like you went through hell and back. You need some AP tennis, that's what you need. Babe, I, I have some emotional damage. Uh.